the world, the physical world actually exists inside of the senses because you don't really, ha you've never perceived a world apart from the senses, which also then if you translate it all the way back, makes sense that all of this is really imagination and focus. Hello, my sweet friends. I decided to draw a little schematic, a little overview to assist you in kind of mapping out as well as experientially tuning in to the different faces of subtlety or the different stages of creatorship versus victim consuming. And so you'll be able to find these levels of focus, if you will, or these levels of thinking, these levels of mind uh, in your direct experience. And if you can kind of get the sense of how this operates and the flow of it, it can help you shift from when you are, it's just a matter of practice and training and repetition, when you are in victim consumer mode versus when you are in deliberate creator mode. So this whole bubble could be visualized as the I am, which is the substratum, it's the awareness love light that makes up the substance, the energy, the substratum of all, all of this, the entire world experience, the entire active portion or active um, principle of God. So at the foundation, we have the I am, as you all are familiar with. And this is the I am before it assumes anything, before it connects itself to a particular focus or definition or self-image. So just the I am. From the I am, the first thing, the subtlest that arises from the I am is that the I am finds focus. Um, one way to picture this is that the entire, say, non-physical universe, so before you see the trees and the planets and all that, the entire universe actually consists of frequency domains, like different levels of frequency, like all the different stations that are playing over the radio waves. So if you picture this entire I am filled with infinite possible frequencies, domains, levels of vibration, then when the I am starts to focus, basically what it does is as it finds its focus, it focuses always on some, some frequency, on some level of vibration. This then, this focusing then produces visuals, sensations, and so forth, which we call imagination. Imagination is still very light. It's still very free. It's not very solid. You can switch your imagination. It's very dreamlike. Nothing is really solid. Um, yeah, it's very dreamlike. So when the IM starts focusing on certain frequencies, then of, of possibility, the, on frequencies of infinite possibility, of infinite potential, then what results, the first thing that results is, is a form of imagination. Now, once that imagination kind of starts to become not solid, but more perhaps consistent, if you start to focus consistently on a particular frequency and you start downloading what those frequencies, how they translate in terms of sensations and imagery and intuitions and so forth and feelings. When you kind of find a groove in that, then it starts to typically form conceptual thoughts, starts to collapse down into words and language and definitions and so forth. This is still pretty malleable. You can change your thoughts. You can change your words. You can give it a different definition. You can use an affirmation. You can activate a different thought. Thoughts are still very changeable through focus, imagination, will, and so forth. This is the path of will, conscious will. So, but then as you begin to think the same thoughts repeatedly, they start to form a perspective, a point of view, um, and finally sort of crystallizes into a belief. So this is a realm of perspectives and beliefs, which is simply a thought you've continued to think to the degree where it starts to take shape as a perspective or belief. It starts to make sense to you. It starts to seem like that's really the way things are. Then when you've crystallized your focus all the way down into a belief, now what will be produced is the sensory world or the sensory experience, which typically people call the physical world. But really, ultimately, we can realize that it is an illusion. And it'd be more accurate to say that the world, the physical world, actually exists inside of the senses because you don't really, ha you've never perceived a world apart from the senses, 
which also then, if you translate it all the way back, makes sense that all of this is really imagination and focus. And But imagination crystallized into beliefs then becomes your what you call your manifest experience. But really, these are already manifestations. They're just uh, different levels of subtlety and changeability and malleability. So the higher you go, the more malleable and dreamlike it is, the more up to you it is. And then the more you crystallize, the more it becomes your sensory world or the physical world, you could say. So typically, but this, this thing works both directions. So if you're in a deliberate state, if you're in a state of deliberate focus, imagination, choosing your thoughts and so forth, you then begin to shift your beliefs and, and your habits and your characters and your perspectives, which then changes your physical world, your sensory world. But if you don't pay attention, if you're not very really awake, if you're not being deliberate and conscious in using this uh, power that you have, then it works the other way around as well. You could say it always works the other way around, but depending on how conscious and deliberate you are, this has either more effect on this uh, or this has more effect on that. So the more conscious, the denser, the more dense our consciousness is, the more we start to go in this direction. And therefore we continuously create and refresh our sensory world. But if we don't, if we're kind of sleepy, if we're in a slumber, if we're in a victim state, if we're just observing our sensory world with not a lot of conscious focus and imagination, then the sensory world that we observe will further reinforce or influence our beliefs because we're observing the things as we think they really happen outside of ourselves. This then forms these solid, scientific, Newtonian, rigid beliefs. And then those beliefs will influence what we think, how we think, how we use language and words and how we express ourselves and so forth. So our conceptual thoughts are now determined by the beliefs and the sensory world that we're observing quite unconsciously or quite in a weak state of will. Now, then these thoughts that are repetitive echoes of the beliefs, they will limit what we're able to imagine. They will limit our vision. They will limit our imagination because we're not deliberate. We're not coming from here into there. We're coming from here and it, it get feedbacks back. It loops back into our imagination. So now the world is kind of determining the cap, the limit, the roof, the paradigm, the parameters inside of which our imagination is now in a sense stuck or so it appears. And this kind of then determines our focus and our focus then is just kind of stuck here. So then we're not refreshing this very often. And therefore it seems like life is actually very solid and repetitive and habitual and determined for us. And we start to more and more feel like a victim or consumer. So bottom line, uh, up your level of consciousness and start training yourself to come more from the I am, the focus and the imagination. And then the thoughts and the beliefs and the sensory world will be produced from there. All right. I hope this makes sense. Have fun.